John, what happened today? Well, the case concluded. Um, it's the family's judicial review against the British government challenging the lawfulness of the De Silva review instead of the, the public inquiry that we were promised. Um, so the British government's argument concluded and then our barrister had an opportunity to respond. But the case is a whole finished today and the judge has now retired to consider his verdict or his judgment on this. What's your hope for that judgment? Well, our hope is that the, the court agrees with our position that what the British government conducted was a, a bit of a sham process whereby they delivered a preconceived and premeditated uh, outcome which was a De Silva review rather than the inquiry. We hope that the court will find that and will also order that the government must hold uh, the inquiry that was promised. Well over the course of this last couple of weeks we've had the Heenan family, the Glen Ann, Spadlight and ourselves. I think in particular Pat's case go, is the iconic case in terms of collusion and state murder and it goes to the heart of the British establishment. As we have found out during the course of uh, our judicial review in, in terms of uh, how the decision makers arrived uh, at their decision and the process that they undertake was always to be a predetermined outcome. One that delivered uh, uh, a non-statutory review uh, as opposed to an independent judicial inquiry. What the case this week has shown, it has crystallised really the disclosure we've received over the past couple of years and I think what that confirms is what lots of people, especially victims of state violence, have feared is that even right up to recent years and the present day is that the British government are not serious at all in providing for victims, in providing the truth and, and being an honest player when it comes to dealing with the past. I think our judicial review this week has shown that, the terminology that has continued to be used surrounding my father, um, brackets, another Republican lawyer, is very insulting and I think when that language is being used not at lower levels, at the very highest level of government. I, I think it's something that should be very worrying for all victims because we are all looking for the same thing and that's the truth and a fair crack at it. We had been told before that um, you know the system had broken down whenever people like Pat Finucane are killed or when Glen Ann happens or many other, uh, many other instances. I don't think that's correct. I think the system was working perfectly because that's what it was designed to do. It was designed to target people, it was designed to kill people and it was designed to provide propaganda around the circumstances surrounding those killings and for that to continue. That's why these people have been continually promoted. That's why this system has been so well resourced and financed uh, and covered up to the present day. But it is coming out. This case shows that you can't bury the truth forever. Um, we have certainly been encouraged by the, the response that we have received from the court this week. We pay particular thanks to our legal team in bringing all of this out and I think lots of other families are doing the same thing. They're refusing to take the narrative of the British government uh, at its word and they are fighting this tooth and nail uh, and I, I think um, credit should be given to every family who continues to do that. 